Hi, welcome to theCUBE. I'm Lisa Martin, your host, and we are on the ground at Google with the CloudNow nonprofit organization for women, honors and recognizes women in cloud computing and converging technologies. Tonight, CloudNow is celebrating their fifth annual Top Women in Cloud Innovations Award. So we're very excited to be here with them. And my next guest is Julie Parker. Welcome, Julie. Hello. Julie Thank is you. from Cantor TCS Reachers. You have actually been a speaker at the event tonight and I'd love to have you share some of the groundbreaking research that you've been doing for CloudDAO on current trends of women in technology. What are some of the key learnings from your most recent research study? Sure, um, so we've actually learned that most women are fairly satisfied with their jobs, which I think was, was very exciting to hear, yet we're finding a segment of the population is not as satisfied, so I call less than satisfied, and tend to be more on the individual contributor side. So potentially ones that are younger, um, starting off in their career, maybe not having the best experience in technology, um, gender, certainly plays a role, gender bias and discrimination, and uh, potentially lack of female role models and mentors. Interesting, so you know, if we look at some of the statistics, um, even from a VC perspective, right? VCs are, are very, it's a very, very male dominated uh, industry. Um, I've got a great friend who just launched her own startup a, a little over a year ago and has a woman over 40. Really hard time just getting mm -hmm. a meeting with a VC. So we look at um, where women are today having that challenge and kind of going, wow, the next generation of startups that materialize into tech giants are going to be male led. Um, from a survey respondent perspective, what have been some of the biggest concerns maybe? Did it dive into that level of kind of, you know, is it, um, is it that senior management is too much of a boys club? What were some of the that, specific that is findings? Certainly one of the findings was that you know, senior management is still perceived as a boys club and, and only a quarter of the women in our survey um, indicated that there were women actually in the upper levels of management in their organizations. So that certainly is a challenge. Um, there are a lot of gender, you know, barriers. So whether it's things like, you know, mansplaining, you know, sort of speaking in a derogatory way to women or directing highly technical questions to only men. Um, those things are still fairly prevalent uh, within, you know, the technology workplace. And that certainly is a problem where women, I think, um, in some ways maybe come to expect gender bias and sort of are used to it. Yeah. Um, so some of the numbers weren't astronomical in terms of you know, gender bias being commonplace at, at, in the workplace, but, um, but still higher than we'd like. Right, and it, one of the things that interests me is the attrition rate for women who start technology careers and leave at mm -hmm. some point is over 50%. I, I often wonder where's, where are the leaks? I don't think it's a pipeline issue mm -hmm. per se, but any have any of the studies that you've done or this recent one kind of started evaluating at, at what point in their career are women leaving the technology industry and, and what careers are they choosing? Is that something that you've Yeah, profiled? we didn't go into you know where are they going, but what we did find is the women who were less than satisfied, 52% said that they were looking to either leave the company that they were at or leave the industry altogether. And that's a really big um, difference from the women who were at least satisfied or very satisfied, where 80% said they, they were going to at least stay at their company, either in the current role or a new role within that current organization. So that's a really big difference between those two groups. So we clearly have a population of women who are having negative experiences. Gender could be one of the factors, right? We know there's more than just gender as part of what would make a woman you know, either be satisfied or not satisfied with her job, but that definitely seems to have a pretty impactful role. And you mentioned that one of the groups was a, a group of individual contributors. Correct. Was there any, um, in terms of how long they'd been at a company, were they fairly? No, we didn't look at tenure per se, okay. but more at the role. And when we looked at women who were in management positions or above, you know, they were actually having you know these higher levels of satisfaction. And I certainly think that they've obviously overcome some of these barriers already. You know, have achieved some hurdles and and earned whether it's credibility or something within their organization where they have a little bit more control over their future. And so I really think it's upon those women to help the future generations you know, to those individuals individual contributors by you know being a positive role model um, providing mentor you know for being a mentor for these women because I do think that that could really make all the difference in terms of keeping these women in the industry because if you think about the cost of the tech industry of having these women in and having them leave 
asking you because it could be losing really valuable resources Absolutely. that you don't want to lose. Did you guys profile um, the ROI differences? I, I forgetting where I read the stat that thirty per, that companies with women in senior management positions have a thirty four percent higher ROI, hmm. which I thought was really interesting. That and is something interesting. That should be kind of explored further. Um, another thing that I saw recently was that Forbes just released their twenty sixteen list of the most one hundred the 100 most powerful mm -hmm. women in the world, and there were 16 technology females, Sheryl Sandberg, mm -hmm. Facebook CEO, being the fifth year in a row mm -hmm. um, on that list. And actually one of the things, first I thought only 16, and then I looked at the uh, by industry, and the only other industry that actually had a higher number of females was politics, mm -hmm. Angela Merkel being number one. So I think that your study is very interesting. Uh, I also, think that there's a lot of changes happening. Mm -hmm. It's it requires patience, right? Because it's not it's not quick. But Cloud Now, organizations like Anita Borg, what we've been doing mm -hmm. with Silicon Angle on the Cube and featuring women weekly for a long time, those are um, clear uh, demonstrations that women have a voice, they have a place in technology, and uh, we want to provide women more opportunities to share their voice and amplify that message. Mm -hmm. Talk with us about maybe some of the next research that you're going to be doing. Is it going to be digging deeper into any of these well, areas? Well, I, I definitely think the study will continue so that we can start to evaluate the trends and sort of see how the, the space is shifting. And, and I do think one of the inspirational things that I found out of this was that, you know, that women, you know, eight, I think it was like 83 or 82 percent said that they would recommend a, a career in technology to their daughters or they would support their daughters in that choice. Eight and Over eighty percent. That's fantastic. It was it was huge. It was much higher than than we expected. There were very few who said you know they wouldn't recommend at all, and I think that women persevere. Women are not afraid of a challenge, and women are willing to work hard to get what they want, and they want that for their daughter. So some of the comments that that women had said were about you know being bold and being yourself, and don't be afraid to be the only woman at the table. You know, speak your mind, and there's value in that. And I think sometimes women don't feel maybe empowered. Um, to do that you know, within the, you know, such a male-dominated industry. And, and there were several women here that um, were still in school and looking at these kind of careers. And, and you know, the message I certainly would want to give to them is that if this is what you, you know, your passion, you, know, you need to go for it and you need to not you know, let anyone stand in your way. Absolutely. And hopefully you can find a good mentor, someone who can help you, you know, go along the way. Because I do think it's a huge compliment for someone to ask you, know, you to be a mentor to them. Uh, for women and most, you know, I haven't heard of a single woman ever turning down that kind of an opportunity to support a younger woman in their career. I love that some of the messages that came out yeah. from those mothers, be bold, you can do this. That's also, I agree with you, messages that I've heard echoed throughout tonight of don't put yourself in a box. Yeah. I think um, one of the one of the kind of the beliefs that I've always had, or not, I shouldn't say always, mm -hmm. maybe recently is having a goal that scares you is a really good thing. Mm -hmm. If it's something that maybe little butterflies in the stomach, that means it's something that is that you're excited about, it's worth pursuing. Yep. And that sounds like not only some of the messages that, that were reflected in um, some of the survey respondents, but also things that you've heard here tonight. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think it's it's a really a very inspirational message. You know, we look at, you know, yes, there are challenges um, and there's going to be gender bias and, and, and we might even be contributing it to ourselves and not even, you know, wittingly That's knowing it Absolutely. but I but I do think that you know women will take on the challenge and will continue to be successful because you know we see women successful all over the place we see these examples and these are people that you know women can look up to and and you know pursue their own dreams you know in those visions of those women absolutely pursuing their own dreams I love that Julie Parker from Kantar TCS Research thank you so much for being on the cube all right thank you so much for having me appreciate it you've been watching the cube I'm your host Lisa Martin and I want to ask you if you know a female that should be on our show filmed in our Palo Alto studios please tweet us at the cube hashtag women in tech thanks for watching and we'll see you next time Stop.